In My Image by Robert P. Fitton. The warehouse punch clock clicked past 5 p.m. Kluger, cigar pinched between his teeth, tapped his short, hairy fingers on the gray metal. Come on, come on, this thing must be stuck. Stevie yelled from the side office and Kluger turned. What are you waiting for, Christmas? Merrill isn't paying overtime. Kluger squinted and puffed the cigar until it glowed red. Busted my arse all afternoon, cutting down brush outside, getting ready to have the minimum wage guys clean them paint vats. I want out. I got things to do at home. Then punch out. I'd like to there, sport. The clock took his punch card. Our new great leader told me to wait without pay. Stevie shuffled papers on his desk and stood. He grabbed his briefcase and punched out ahead of Kluger. You don't answer to Herbert Frederick. Old man Merrill hired him to clean up this paint factory. Kluger leaned against the clock, but I think the bastard has it in for me. <laughs> Frederick has it in for everyone. Good night. Yeah, see you, Stevie. Stevie moved down the narrow hall and pushed the outside glass door. As the door closed, Kluger heard the sharp click of Frederick's Galliani imported shoes hitting the staircase treads, and his sickening cologne followed him upstairs. Why would anyone stuff a silk handkerchief all fluffed up like a flower into his suit coat pocket? Frederick arched his back, his long slender nose pointed slightly skyward, and his lips pushed out as if he were going to kiss himself. Kluger, what are you doing dilly-dallying here? Kluger raised his bushy brows. Frederick, you told me to wait for you. Mr. Frederick, I gotta get home. My wife is waiting. Too bad. Please extinguish that filthy cigar. It's making me quite nauseated. Kluger stared at him, yanked the stub from his mouth, and dropped it into the sand bucket. He moved toward Frederick like a fighter about to begin the first round. You don't hear me telling you to get rid of that perfume you're wearing. Dear, dear Kluger, so set in his crude and rigid ways, he removed a neatly folded computer sheet from his inner pocket. What the hell is that? This, Kluger, is a systematic and rigorous study of your work habits. The evaluation and performance standard is, to say the least, lacking. Kluger stepped near his cologne-reeking face. Look, college boy, I worked here for the last 16 years. I know this factory inside and out. I don't need you coming in here and telling me what to do. A slow smile crossed Frederick's smooth face. I have the full backing of Mr. Merrill. If you value your job, you will do things my way. Bullshit to you and your phony report. Frederick unfolded the paper and placed it in Kluger's hands. Blood rushed to Kluger's cheeks as he tightened his facial muscles. Frederick's report accused him of dawdling on the job and costing the company thousands per month. Too much time talking to fellow employees. Work quote is not on time. I tell you, this is all bullshit. The tip of the iceberg, Kluger. I ain't no robot. We're not all perfect like you. I demand peak efficiency, Kluger, and I will get it. He handed Kluger a second sheet of paper. I've established, using my extensive business knowledge and foresight, a document of rules and regulations. You will follow these rules to the letter. Kluger glanced at the numbered regulations. No talking except on specific breaks? You gotta be shitting me. What the hell is this work quota? Can't do all this work in eight hours. You will or find employment elsewhere. You can't fire me, big man. He shoved the papers into Frederick's chest. You are bluffing. I have the power to ruin you, Kluger. Kluger wondered whether old man Merrill had really given Frederick so much power. Listen, I have a wife and four kids. Then I suggest that you tow the mark. Report to work 15 minutes early, unpaid, of course. Get my coffee going and put the Wall Street Journal on my desk. You're a son of a... Now, now, Kluger he said, grinning and raising his index finger. Secondly, you will be required to work till 6 p.m. with no overtime benefits since you are technically in management. You can't do this. Kluger clamped his fist and cocked his arm. Go ahead, Kluger. I sense you don't have the nerve to hit me. You need your 
paycheck to keep that tenement roof over your head. You'll pay for this. Kluger started down the hall to the outside door. I don't think so. <laughs> he laughed loudly as, as Kluger grasped the cold <laughs> doorknob. Everything will be remade in my image. And you will work tonight or be fired. Kluger's body tensed and his head throbbed as he trudged to the punch clock. Frederick's high-pitched voice tugged at his frayed nerves. He was just tired enough to lose control and punch Frederick's face into a bloody mess. I've worked hard every day for the last 16 years. I am touched by your devotion. Tonight I have scheduled you to clean the paint vats. I can overlook your low output if you scour the vats. I'm a supervisor. My job isn't to... Your job is what I say it is. He placed another computer sheet in Kluger's hands. This is yesterday's report. You didn't punch out. And we have quotas here that have not been completed. Kluger inhaled and grit his teeth. He shred the report with his bare hands and threw the pieces into the air. That's enough. I, of course, have other copies on the disc. You, Kluger, are on probation. You bastard. Kluger hooked his clenched fist into Frederick's jaw, lifting him upward. Frederick buckled at the knees and his eyes rolled as he hit the cement. Kluger stood over him with both fists locked tight. Get up. Frederick's blue eyes slowly opened and he focused. When he smiled this time, his deep laugh shook the room. <laughs> his eyes spun and the whites formed a buzzing red mass of conflicting internal energy. Kluger backed up toward the plant doors and then hit the doors at a full run. He leaped down the stairs. The high metal frame shelving above was packed with paint pallets stacked to the corrugated roof. His heart revved out of control as he ran, his mind fixated on Frederick's blazing eyes. He thought the energy some kind of trick, and then Frederick's voice modulated off the gray cylinder walls. Kluger! Kluger! All the doors are locked, Kluger! Kluger looked over his shoulder and ducked down a side aisle. In the silent warehouse, he shuffled back across the dust-covered cement, squatted, and hid in the shadows. Maybe the voice was a PA system and the trick with the eyes designed to scare him out of his job. He leaned his head against the metal support, but something creaked and slid above him. Plastic-wrapped paint buckets stacked on a pallet tilted. He rolled to his left as the paint careened over the shelf and burst apart on the cement, spraying green paint globs over his work clothes. Murderer! What's the matter, Kluger? Job got you down? Fluorescent light tubes along the metal ceiling flickered like lightning in a violent thunderstorm. He could slip outside if he climbed the warehouse stairs beyond the stacks. Instead, he crawled under the stacks and into the next aisle. Checking above, he raced by the huge paint vats and toward the outside office stairs along the wall to his left. He glanced back at the shelving as he grabbed the banister and started up the plastic stair treads. The upper fluorescent light tubes pulsed like a strobe light over the spacious warehouse. He slowed and stopped when he saw Frederick sitting alone on the metal stacks. You're going to die, Kluger. Kluger turned, but the next step crumbled like a crisp cracker, and he, he fell into the dark maintenance room. He pushed his way through empty cans, lawnmowers, and rakes. A gas-powered chainsaw buzzed in the blackness. He tripped as the buzzing got louder, and he scrambled to the outside door. His hands flew wildly up the frame. He pulled it open, and he slammed it shut. In the pulsing light, the saw splintered the wood and sent sawdust and wood chips scattering. The buzzing suddenly stopped and Frederick's laugh haunted the building again. He sat atop a paint vat and the red fire in his eyes brightened. <laughs> Very good, Kluger. Now, where do you think you're going? Cat, got your tongue? <laughs> Let me out of here. I thought you were going to kill me, my friend. Please, my family needs me. Don't kill me. Should I kill you or completely possess you? Or both? <laughs> Kluger ran toward the shipping doors. 
The green automatic button switch on the wall did not function. He bent over and tried manually hoisting the large door, but it was locked in place. Something pinged on the metal above, and a paint lid dropped to the concrete. More silver metal lids sailed toward him at high velocity. He dove to his left and slid forward as the tinny lid smacked the doors, some stuck in the adjoining wallboard. He stumbled to his feet as one of the lids hit his shoulder, knocking him against the outside bay door. Another one grazed his brow and blood rolled down his cheek. <laughs> Frederick's laughter continued unabated as Kluger retreated across the warehouse toward the raw materials bins. <laughs> Here I am, Kluger. His giddiness stirred Kluger's anger. Frederick stood nonchalantly along the conveyors near the lunchroom. Kluger darted through the open doorway and back into the warehouse, realizing he needed to kill Frederick. He stroked his chin. The bay down the stacks to the upper offices looked clear. Before he could step forward, lids blew off the sealed paint cans and paint exploded onto the large floor. Huge plastic paint buckets and metal cans moved into the aisles. Kluger backed toward the vats. One of the loose cans slammed into his ankle bone and he now limped toward the wall phone. He dialed 911 and the line rang. With an unusual click, the voice of Herbert Frederick tap danced into his ear. Kluger dropped the phone and it hit the wall. As he turned, the receiver levitated before him, but shot out like a cannonball, wrapping the flexible metal line around his neck. He grabbed the line with both hands and tried to keep it from choking his air supply. Frederick spoke through the line again. That was only the beginning, Kluger. The line loosened and the receiver hung harmlessly around his neck. He unwound the line and prayed he had only imagined the last half hour. The lights above were clear and the paint cans and buckets all neatly stacked within the pallet plastic. Kluger wandered into the open area ahead of the stacks and scanned the warehouse. It was as if nothing had happened and Frederick was gone. The propane forklift engine started. Six yellow cab machines backed from their parked positions and looped in unison around the vats. He broke into a hobble when they accelerated over the concrete and he doubted whether he could successfully reach the stacks. With the forklifts on Kluger's heels, Frederick laughed again. <laughs> Kluger veered to his left, dove and gripped Frederick's ankles as he brought him down. He gripped his boss in a full Nelson and then thrust his body outward toward the approaching forklifts. Frederick cried out, his arms and legs spread apart as the center collided into his body. Kluger watched in astonishment as the left fork pierced through the back of Frederick's suit, producing a bloody, spatted blood smudge over the gray fabric. The machine edges were cut and the lifts rolled harmlessly to a stop. But Herbert, Frederick's body, like a stabbed hunk of meat on a dinner fork, hung lifeless. His head dipped into his chest and chunks of blonde hair were flung over his forehead. More blood saturated his vest fabric, and his well-manicured nails were deathly still. Kluger crawled into the forklift cab and started the engine. With Frederick firmly in place, he swung the lift around and drove toward the paint vats. He pushed the hydraulic as he neared the containers and raised Frederick's pierced form high into the warehouse. With the body positioned over the open vat, Kluger shut off the engine and forced his way up the metal stairs. Huge green drums of acid used for cleaning the vats were unopened on the metal grid. He glanced at the lift prongs sticking through Frederick's back as he rolled the barrel on its bottom. In the first aid station, he grabbed a pair of light-colored latex gloves and some goggles. Quickly, he returned and used the pliers to unscrew the barrel cap. He flung the cap inside the vat and strained to push the barrel over. The acid surged out the opening and into the tank. He repeated the procedure until he had emptied 11 55-gallon drums, and then he gazed down at his image on the wavy surface. He moved carefully down the metal stairs and started the forklift. With the hydraulic lever, he lowered Frederick's legs into the tank. Then he jammed the machine in reverse. He spun back, and Frederick's legs caught the tank edge. As the engine whined, his body splashed and bubbled into the acid. Soon it would be eaten away and all remnants of Herbert Frederick's evil being would vanish forever. For three hours, 
Kluger sat at the Red Grills bar stool. The football game had ended 20 minutes ago. He held the edges of a frosted beer mug and stared at the floor behind the bar. Music rocked the side speakers. A few couples danced on the parquet floor under the colored lights, and his wife was probably panicking by now. He slowly raised his head and looked at himself in the long mirror behind the liquor bottles. Four hours ago, he was a devoted father and good husband. Now the deep lines etched in his beard stubble completed the dazed look of a murderer. He could argue self-defense, but who would listen? He felt the stubble with his fingers. Fatigue had set in. Even his brows were less bushy. The dangling metal of a silver wrist bracelet slid over his fair skin as he lifted his mug. He clawed the bracelet chain when he saw HF inscribed into the shiny surface. No, not this. Unable to remove the bracelet, he left the beer mug on the counter and hurried to the men's room. He pounded the soap dispenser and smeared a green goop over his wrist. The chain was stuck. In the cold bathroom reflection, his dark eyes were rimmed with an encroaching blue luminescence. The smoothness of his chin had spread upward, effectively leveling his beard, and his nose had lengthened. Fine blonde strands were interspersed with his black, bristly hair. He slowly held up his smooth hands and gawked at the perfectly trimmed nails. I ain't Herbert Frederick. Oh, please, God. The green uniform was bulky and inappropriate, but easily replaced with a number of items in his condominium closet. He ran his fingertips gently over his light hair, cropped midway at the ears. Fleeting hint of darkness in his eyes was washed away when he blinked. He checked his asymmetrical array of sparkling teeth and smiled. I am Herbert Frederick.